So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple just released iPadOS 15.4 Beta 3 to all developers to test out, see what's going on and see if there's any new features that are worth sharing with you guys. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to be going over battery performance with iPadOS 15.4 Beta 3. We're going to talk about any bugs that they fixed, any performance improvements, and then finally see if there are any tangible features or any changes inside of the UI that are worth sharing. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So let's get right into this video, everybody. So the first thing we're gonna show you is the actual size of this new update. So let's go into the recents. I did take a screenshot and check out that we are on iPadOS 15.4 developer beta three. We're dealing with about 530 megabytes of total storage in order to get this update installed correctly. So give yourself at least one gigabyte of open storage in order to get this installed and make sure there's no corrupt files or anything that happens with this update. But that is 15.4 beta three. And now we are up and running. So if we go into the settings, if we go into the about section, and we're going to talk about the actual storage bug in a little bit, but if we go into the about section, click on 15.4, you can see that we're on 19E5225G. So I do believe that the last update was actually letter F, which is a little bit strange because normally we go down in letters when it comes to these updates. So we are on G, but we do think that Apple will release this in the next four weeks to the entire public with their mid-March you know, announcement or mid-March event that they normally have. And then again, in normal beta updates, usually the first beta, after the first beta, it takes about two weeks to get the second beta. But as of right now, Apple seems to be in a week-to-week -week beta update release schedule, which is not normal. Normally it goes beta one, wait two weeks, beta two, wait two weeks, and then we go on that weekly schedule. But Apple seems to be changing it up because they probably think that it's ready to go and they wanna get universal control in the hands of everybody else. So in terms of tangible differences, there weren't too many, and I'm actually gonna give you guys an inside look at what is released to all developers when they do get their developer account and when their new update happens. So here we have iOS and iPadOS 15.4 beta three release notes. And we're gonna go through all these because most of these are all known issues and then workarounds. So as of right now, you can see that we have a few known issues with authentication. So we have sign into an iPad is limited to apps in this beta. We also have some FaceTime issues where there is an automatic photo being captured when you're on a FaceTime, which is probably not something that you want to have. So basically, Apple's just letting us know like, hey, we know that there's issues. We're working. We're getting some workarounds going together and making sure that it's ready to go for the entire public. So there's some known issues with the help app, health kit, also some known issues with home kit, iTunes, messages. That emergency SOS function is actually taken off if you live in India, because apparently they're having some situation where if you do call it in India, it's calling too soon. It's getting a lot of fake calls happening to whatever dispatchers are going on over there. There's also a known setting in the throughput test results for settings and then store kit testing as well. So those are all the known issues that came with iPadOS 15.4 beta three. And apparently these updates are gonna be very heavy on the developer side because they want third party developers to really take advantage of their new SDK, really take advantage of being able to maybe sideload applications and give developers kind of a side way in that doesn't involve the app store. Because again, on the legal side, it seems like Apple has monopolized the idea of an app store on the iOS side and people are constantly battling. So Apple is giving people the opportunity to sideload apps. Now we don't know what that looks like, how difficult it is, if the normal person's gonna be able to do that, but at least the option is gonna come sooner rather than later so Apple can be done with all the legal battles. Also, before we keep going, definitely check out channel sponsor Paperlike, guys. If you guys wanna keep your screen protected, this is by far my favorite screen protector and the number one accessory that I recommend to any and all iPad users, new and old, to make sure that you keep that resell value. Because remember, the main interaction is this screen. So if the screen gets messed up in any way, that resale value is gonna plummet. So make sure that you got a nice screen protector and Paperlike is always my go-to. But let's continue and talk about performance with iPadOS 15.4 beta three. And everything seems to be extremely snappy. You can see that 120 Hertz being taken advantage of here. If I scroll down very quickly, third party apps are now able to adopt 120 Hertz with that promotion on the mini LED of the iPad Pro, which is amazing. But you can see performance is very snappy. Multitasking seems to work very easily. No problems whatsoever. If I want to start moving stuff around, move it over here, you know, get that multitasking going. As you can see, no issues whatsoever. So if you guys are thinking about jumping into the beta program, again, I'm going to reiterate that this has been the most stable beta program to date. I remember two years ago when iPadOS 13 was released and they put it on the iPads for the first time, it was very glitchy and it took a while before I recommended it to anybody jump on that beta program. But with iPadOS 15, the betas have been great. And then what I want to do is actually jump into the battery settings, see what we're dealing with with the battery, see if we've ever gotten close to that eight hours of battery life. So we go into battery, give it a second to load up. 
we have the last 10 days of usage. We're averaging about an hour and a half of screen on time, two hours and 40 minutes of screen off time. If we go on a day like Friday, you can see that we used up 75% of our battery and only got about two and a half hours of screen on time. Now, a lot of it was LumaFusion, the home and lock screen, Bruce V, that is a plugin that I use to reduce background noise inside of LumaFusion. So you see that battery life is okay. On a day like Monday, we got four hours and a half of screen on time to about 75% battery. That means that I'll probably get another 25% on top of that, which probably would give me another hour and a half. So I'd probably get six hours on a day like Monday. And then you have a day like Wednesday where we are using Sidecar a lot of the day. So Sidecar took about 64% of battery, took about two hours, but we are averaging about two hours and 40 minutes of screen on time and like eight hours of screen off time. So keep that in mind when thinking about the battery life. I'm still yet to get anywhere of that eight to 10 hours of battery life but I am on the beta program. I'm just hoping that Apple does do something with these M1 iPad Pros and their battery life because it needs to be better in order to be an all day device. Like I want that iPhone 13 Pro Max style battery on the M1 iPad Pro and that's how it was sold. It was sold 10 hours of battery life. I mean, if I stayed inside a Safari the whole day, then maybe I would get it, but I'm not getting that right now. But that's pretty much gonna do it with this update. Again, nothing too, too new. Let's get out of this view and go to the normal one. So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. The two headlining features with 15.4 overall have to be twofold, right? On the iPad side, it's universal control finally coming to Mac OS and iPad OS. And then on the iOS side, it's the new Face ID unlock with mask and as well as glasses. Even though Face ID already kind of works with both you know, reading glasses and sunglasses, it's nice that they have kind of a second category for glasses with Face ID, which again, still has not come to the iPad, which I don't know, Apple needs to bring that to the iPad. People wear glasses indoors, so iPad. So Apple, bring that over to the iPad. But with this beta iteration, there weren't too many new tangible differences, if any at all. So I just wanna let everybody know that overall, from a performance standpoint, this beta program has been absolutely spectacular. I've had zero issues, zero restarts of applications, zero rebooting, no need to restart the iPad at all, no data corruption. So if you guys do wanna jump on the beta program, there is a public beta developer program. If you guys wanna jump in on that one, that one's free. Everything is about 24 to 48 hours delayed, which really isn't that bad, and it used to be a lot worse. So if you guys do wanna play with Universal Control, by all means, jump on that public developer program because it's very, very worth it. And worst case scenario, you just revert back to a non-beta program on your main device. And then in terms of when to expect this update to the entire public, if you guys do wanna wait until around mid-March, cause that's when I do believe Apple will be releasing this to the entire public. Give it about another four to five weeks and then Apple will release this to the public for everybody to finally get their hands on Universal Control, that new Face ID unlock. You know, I think ID passports are also coming and making their way over to iOS and iPadOS. So honestly, the sky's the limit with iOS and iPadOS devices. And we should be getting some sort of tap to pay feature on the iPhone later this year, which is gonna be crazy and it's gonna ruin competitors like Square and things like that. So Apple seems to be just monopolizing everything and putting it inside of their ecosystem. And that's their master plan. It all started with that Apple card and getting into your finances. But I digress, that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below to make sure that I know that you made it to the end. Check out the channel sponsor Paperlike, first link in the description below. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'm out of here. That was iPadOS 15.4, beta three.